and a dying go to. Why? Because they would not follow the scriptures. They decided they were going to live anyhow in the world. I'm here to tell you today that tomorrow was not given to you. It was not promised to you. Nobody said you're going to see another day. In fact, the scripture said tomorrow is promised to no man. Amen. This could be your last day. We sing that song, I don't know. I just don't know. Today could be your last day. Sit down living anyhow in the world and living the way you want to live. How do you know where you're going to see tomorrow? you got plans for another day? Who said so? Who said you're going to see another day? Huh? Who said you're going to pass through another day and another night? Who gave you that knowledge when the scripture contradicts that message? Tomorrow is promised to no man. Doesn't matter whether you're right or whether you're wrong. If the righteous die, God took him. If the righteous man dies, God took him. If the righteous woman dies, God took her. The righteous child dies. God took that child too. It's going to say, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. It's going to say, when the righteous perish, no man considers it. But God took him from the things that are to come. In other words, you look at the righteous man's life and God recognizes that there's something coming that he could not bear. And God took him. It's going to say, no man considers that God took him from the things to come. Yeah, the things that are coming on the earth. Yeah, God took him out of it. Took him away from it. Hell is real. It's not a figment of our imagination. It's real. That body you're in, that carbon body you're in, made of dirt, that's all it is, is a carbon body. Amen. It's made of dirt. Huh? It's made of dirt. Go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 39. You live in an unbelieving world. They decided they want to die. I was listening to some people talking the other day. A young man, they were asking a young man, a very young man too, where would you go if God came today? And he said, well, I'm not sure I understand the question. He said, okay, let me, let me tell you what God said in this world. Don't steal, don't cheat, don't lie, don't fornicate, don't commit adultery, don't, don't, don't lust. He said, with all those things that I just asked you, have you done any of those things? The young man nodded yes. Then he asked him, where do you think you'd go, given what I just told you, if God came today? The young man expressly stated, I think I would go to hell. He said it with such ease, there was a smile on his face, because he didn't understand the implications. Of course he'd go to hell. But listen, if just one man, if only one man, could have gone to hell and come back again, if only one could have gone down there, and if God had just allowed him to come back to tell us the story, not one of us would go down there. Because everybody that goes down there stays down there. Nobody's let back up. When Abraham would not send Lazarus down to cool his tongue with water, he said, why don't you send Lazarus to warn my brothers not to come to this place? Just go tell them. I can imagine that rich man pleading I can imagine him asking if you could but send Lazarus to warn my brothers not to come down here. Make a change. Get right with God. And Father Abraham said, not so. Because if they did not believe the living, neither will they believe the dead. Neither will they believe though one rises from the dead. You know what he was saying? 
saying their hearts are so hard. Doesn't matter whether you're living or you're dead. You go tell them about God, they will not change. They are too hooked on this life. Huh? They don't want to hear. They're too given over to living the way they see others living. They're too given over to death. That law of sin and death that now governs them. They won't change. They won't get right. When Father Abraham said if they will not believe the living, it means there are men back there preaching Christ right now. And if they won't take what they have to say about Jesus Christ, if I raise Lazarus from the dead and send him back there, they might be astonished, but they still will not believe. Imagine that rich man must have been distraught when he realized his brothers were living the same way he was living. They were going to end up in the same place he went to. And there was absolutely nothing he could do about it. There was nothing that he could do about it. Matthew 12, my brother, verse 39. But he answered, but he said, answered and said, and said unto them, Yeah, that's a wicked, an evil and adulterous nation generation. Yes, I read that again. An evil, an evil and adulterous, and adulterous generation. You know what that means, huh? You know what that means? The scripture said that my people have neglected the fountain of life. They've decided to go another way. What does it mean by an adulterous? Generation. The word adultery means you you're in a marriage, but you're you're out with someone else. God is in fact talking about how we live in the world. We are guilty of idolatry, of lusting, of fornicating, of sinning. We're in a marriage, but we're not acting like we're in a marriage. We don't listen to the bridegroom. We're not true brides. A wicked and adulterous generation seeking the sign. We don't. An evil and adulterous generation yes. seeketh after a sign. They seek it after what? A sign. That means they don't believe. That's all it means. Ever had someone say something to you and you said, prove it? Yes. Why? We don't believe it. Ever had someone say to you, hey, you know when I saw someone walk through that wall? And you'll say, prove it. Why? You don't believe it. The only time you and I seek a sign when we don't believe. Because if you told me something and I believed it, I wouldn't need a sign. But if I don't believe it, and I need to be convinced, I need a sign. Now you all remember the story of the disciples, the apostles, that were waiting in the room when Jesus appeared in their midst. But Thomas was not among them. And you may all remember that Thomas said, unless I put my finger in his hands, and unless I thrust my hand in his side, I will not believe. What was Thomas asking for? He was asking for a sign. Now, read that for me again, Matthew 12, 39, and read up. An evil and adulterous. An evil and adulterous generation. Seeketh. Seeketh. After a sign. That's right, they don't believe. But read on. And there shall no sign be given to you. Know, you know what God is saying? Listen, what we have preached here today is all you're going to get. What you heard us preach before is all you're going to get. If you don't believe it, 
with what you've heard even from us, you're in trouble with God. Because Jesus Christ is saying, listen, he's not giving you a better sign than he's giving you. Listen, it's enough that he came, died, rose again. And see, listen, this is what it says. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The fact is, that's all you're going to get. That's all you're going to get. Read on, read there for me. And there shall no sign be given. And to. there shall no sign be given. To. Yes. But the sign of the prophet Jonah. But the sign of the prophet Jonah. That's right, read on. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. So shall the Son of Man. So shall the Son of Man. The Son of Man. Be three days. Be three days. And three nights. And three nights. In the heart of the earth. In the heart of the earth. You know what he's saying? I want you to hold that and go back to Romans 10 and verse 9. I want you to hold that and go back to Romans 10 and verse 9. Because I'm going to prove to you that all it requires of you and I is to believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. That God raised him from the dead. <clears throat> Read Romans 10 verse 9. That if thou shalt confess, but if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe, and in, shalt believe in thine heart, in thine heart that God, that God hath raised him, hath raised him from the dead. That's exactly right. That's all you need to believe. You see, if you believe that, you can believe God can do anything. If you believe that, then you understand how it is you're saved. Most believers, or so-called believers, do not believe that Christ died, was bodily dead. There was no air in his body. He died. His spirit left his body. He died. And God raised him from the dead. Most believers don't believe. You see, if you believe that God raised Christ from the dead, then you believe that God can do anything. Whether it's to heal your body, heal your home, heal your marriage, heal your finances. You will believe it. And you'll live like you do. Huh? He was raised a spiritual body. Went down a natural body. Raised a spiritual body. Finish up verse 10, verse 9. Verse. And shalt believe in thy heart. And shalt believe in thy heart. That God hath raised him. That God hath raised him. From the dead. From the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be saved. That's what the scripture says. Most of you both don't believe. If you stop for just a moment and think about it. I was talking to a group of young men this week. They boasted about the number of funerals they've been to over the past two years of their friends who have died. They boasted about it. Most recent one that was killed was 19 years away, shot in the head, less than three blocks from his own house. Hmm? Yes, it was in Philadelphia. 19 years of age, shot no more than three blocks from his own house. Late at night, he asked himself, what are you doing out there? Well, as I say to people, redeeming the time. If you redeem the time, you'll know that it's not safe on the street at night. Redeeming the time. Perilous time, that's right. It's in the last days, perilous time shall come. That means dangerous time. That's what the word perilous means. It means dangerous. Dangerous time shall come. Men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. They'd rather please themselves and take your life in doing so. You wonder how a man is in it, holds a woman down and rapes her. Well, he's more keen on fulfilling what he wants. He doesn't care about you. Huh? 
He doesn't care what I order about you. All he cares about is what he wants. He'll take your life when he's done to you. So you can't identify. All he cares about is what he can get. Perilous time shall come. Read an article recently that said, said, don't look your nose anybody you didn't invite to your house. You're not supposed to. If you didn't invite them there, why are you open the door to them? How do you know who they are and what their intentions are? Perilous time shall come in the last days. Perilous times shall come. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15. Verse 33. You start reading that for me, brother. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Yes. Evil communication. Why does it say be not deceived? Well, it's very simple. Sometimes we like to convince ourselves there's nothing wrong with mixing with the world. Hmm? Be not deceived. Don't, don't, don't kill yourself. Be not deceived. Evil communication does corrupt with life. Be not deceived. Don't deceive yourself into thinking there's nothing wrong with it. There is something wrong. And the scripture says, be not deceived, evil communication comes with man. It's going to change you. Read verse 34. Awake. Awake to righteousness. And? And sin not. Yes. For some have not the knowledge of God. That's what the scripture says. They have not the knowledge of God. They don't know. There are some people that are born in ignorance. They're going to die in ignorance. Amen. They'll tell you there's nothing wrong with it. What's wrong with it? Ever heard someone in the church say, what's wrong with it? You know, the world doesn't care, so they say, nothing's wrong with it. But if you question a believer about it, they might say, what's wrong with it? I would just say to people, well, you, you know when someone's saved and when they're not saved. Because the Spirit of God brings that old conscience alive, and you begin to know what's right and what's wrong. When that conscience is dead, in trespasses and sins, then most of what is wrong, you're going to say it's right. Because your conscience is that. But when the scripture said that, you'll be quickened. The word quickened means brought to life. The conscience, which was one dead, is now alive. When something is wrong, it's just wrong. And if you're alive, you'll know it's wrong. And if you're dead, you'll say it's right. And the scripture said the wicked shall not understand, meaning a man still living in sin and under the law of sin and death will tell you what's wrong is right. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Why? The conscience which was once asleep or is once dead is now wide awake. But some are, I have not the knowledge of God, but I speak the still shame. Read verse 35, brother. But some man will say. So some man will say. Yes. How? How are the dead raised up? That's a silly question for a man that does not know who God is. Because the same God that made man and put him down is going to resurrect him again. In the same way that Jesus Christ died and was buried and was raised from the dead, God's going to raise us again. And what body do they come to? Well, thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quicker than read verse 36. Thou fool, that which thou is not quickened, except it die. Yes, the brother said, thou fool, that which thou sowest. That means what you put in the ground. It's talking about a seed. When you plant the seed, Jesus Christ was the seed of the church. When he died, he brought forth much fruit. That which is sown is not quickened, meaning it's not brought back to life except it first dies. That's why Jesus Christ had to die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be. But good be, and I'm finished now. I'll go over to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11. I'll stop there, Revelation 20 and verse 11.
Revelation 20 verse 1. And I saw a great white throne. And I saw a great white throne. Yes. And him that sat on it. And him that sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Yes. And there was found no place for them. There was found no place for them. And I saw the dead. Yes. Small and great. Small and great. Stand before God. Stand before God. And the books were open. And the books were open. And another book was open. Yes. Which is the book of which life. Which is the book of life. And they were judged. And they were judged. Every man. Every man. According. According. To their works. To their works. That means the way you've been living. Is going to be compared to the word of God. Jesus Christ said the words which I spoke in the last days. Those words will judge you. Amen. Read on my brother. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. That means everything that went down there is coming up. Read on brother. And death and hell. Delivered up the dead which were in that. Yes, everything that died and went to heaven is coming up again. Read on, brother. And they were judged every man. Every man according. According to their work. According to the life they live. Read on. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Yes, my brother, read on. This is the second death. Thank you. And whosoever was not found written. In the Lamb. In the, in the book of life. Yes. Was cast into the lake of fire. Yes. Thank you. God bless you as we read it in Acts 2 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. You shall receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children. To all that are far off, even as many as the Lord your God shall call. And with many other words that he testified, it's all saying, Save yourselves from this untoward, that is this hellbound generation. Amen. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. We look forward to you hearing our message once again and hope that they'll do something for you. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Jesus died, yes he died for me, when Jesus rose, Jesus rose, yes he rose for me, when Jesus comes, Jesus comes, he will come for me.